This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Back on the treehouse. This video you're gonna see me attempting to frame the actual house structure for the treeless treehouse. Now I say attempting because I've never framed anything in my entire life. So this should be interesting. You're gonna hear me use a lot of made-up terms because I don't know the actual names of anything. So just go with it and hopefully by the end of this video we have something that resembles a house on top of some stilts. Just keep in mind, I don't know what I'm doing. So all the comments that I know you'll be dying to leave in the video description about that's not the way you do it, oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, obviously, because like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. To start out, I needed my floor to be square because when I put up these tongue and groove pine boards, I just threw them on there and let them overhang. So I cut them all square with the track saw. So at least we had a square floor to start out with. I feel like things being square is important when it comes to building. Here's my design. I did the entire thing in SketchUp just off of what I think framing should look like based on seeing things being built before. I don't know. We're going to start with the back wall because it has no doors or windows and it seems like that should be the easiest place to start for a novice. So I ordered a bunch of lumber from my local lumber yard and had it delivered. So I started picking through and grabbing all the parts and pieces and hauling them up to my platform. That meant going up the stairs onto our first little platform. Once we got up there, I had to cross the suspension bridge. You remember that? My grandma walked across it. Onto our main platform where we'll be building our structure. Now it's funny. When you order 12 foot 2x4s, I just assumed they'd be 12 feet, but that's not the case. Apparently that means they're 12 feet 1 quarter inch, because that makes sense. So I cut them down, using my foot, because someone told me that's what contractors do, they cut things off their foot, and I wanted to be a real contractor. We also had to cut down all of our vertical studs, because those were just over 8 feet and I needed them to be right at eight feet. So again, using my foot, like a real man, I cut down all of our vertical stud thingamawatsits. Once all of our pieces were cut to length, I could start marking out my dinner plate. The dinner plate's what you call the stud on the bottom of a wall. I think this is how the real professionals do it. They mark out their dinner plate where all the studs are gonna land, and then they can just line the studs up on that dinner plate and tack them in place. I also marked out my dessert plate because it would perfectly match my dinner plate. The dessert plate goes on the top of the wall because you always eat dessert after you eat dinner. That's how you can remember that. Pretty soon I had all my studs marked out on both my dinner plate and my dessert plate and we were ready to start nailing our studs in place. Now, I spaced these studs out 16 inches on center because I think I heard somewhere that that's how studs are supposed to be spaced out. So we're going with it. Once we had them all lined out on my previously marked out bottom dinner plate, I used this beefy framing nail gun and I nailed everything together. Now, when I've seen guys frame in the past, they do this really quick, just a ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. But this nail gun kind of scares me a little bit, so I had to go much slower. This is, after all, the first wall I've ever framed in my entire life. Once I had all the vertical studs nailed into my dinner plate, I set the dessert plate on top. And remember, that's all pre-marked out to match my dinner plate. And I just tacked all the studs into the dessert plate. 
Next, I needed to lay in these corner studs that will allow this wall to attach to the other wall. I'm pretty sure this is called a King Cobra stud because that sounds cool. So that's what we're going with. And it runs in the opposite direction to my main studs, giving us a nice flat surface to attach to the other wall. So I just laid that in place and tacked it in with a few nails. And I figured I put one on the other side, might as well put one on this side too. Two King Cobra studs in place and nailed in. Now, because this whole tower treehouse thing of what's it is going to be about 10 feet off the ground which makes it difficult to do anything on the outside of the building I thought it would be easier to add our sheathing to the wall before we stood it up and put it in place so we carried three sheets of four by eight half inch CDX sheathing up to our tower and we tacked it onto the wall not only did this make it a lot easier to sheath the wall, it also helps make sure the wall is nice and square because we can square it up to the edge of our sheets of plywood. With that, it was almost time to stand this wall up, but I wanted to tack this little 2x4 on the back of our tower to give us a surface to push the wall up against so that we could make sure that the wall was perfectly aligned with the back edge of our flooring. And we just lifted our wall up into place being very careful not to go too far i had visions of this thing just toppling over the other side and i didn't want that to happen so much so that while craig held the wall i added some little brace pieces just temporary assurance that this thing's not gonna fall down Craig held the level on the wall and I tacked on the brace pieces. Now the wall doesn't have to be perfectly level right now. We can do that when we add the other walls, but might as well try and get it somewhat close. Once we had a brace piece on either side and knew the wall wasn't gonna fall over, we made sure that wall was pushed right up to the back edge of our flooring and I nailed it down to the floor, hoping the entire time that this is actually what you're supposed to do. Now you can see in the background that we're adding a little addition onto the side of our house. So it was kind of funny that there are people who actually know what they're doing framing a real house right next to us while we pretend to know what we're doing framing a little house. I don't know why, I just think that's ironic. Anyways, with one wall done, it was time to start on wall number two. So I taught Craig how to be a real carpenter and cut things off his foot, and he started cutting down studs while I marked out our second dinner plate. Now this one's gonna be a little more complicated because we have a window. So we have to frame it just a little different to accommodate said window. So along with our normal vertical studs, we also have some Jack Reacher studs because they're pretty BA, so you call them Jack Reacher studs, because they also reach up and grab the window. At least, that's what I'm telling myself. I could be wrong, but I feel like after this video, these are going to be the new terms that people use for framing, because I'm nailing it, both figuratively and literally. With our Jack Reacher studs in place, I tacked on my Lucille Ball plate and then added my header honcho. It's a two by six header honcho that goes above the window. I don't really know the point of a header above a window. I know it has to do something. Maybe it's supposed to be stronger so the weight of the building doesn't break your window glass. I don't know. I just know every door or window I've ever seen has a header honcho, so I'm adding one. Pretty soon my friend Colin showed up. He is the proprietor of a local coffee shop called Tried and True, and he had a few days off and wanted to get outside and do some manual labor. He's weird like that, but we welcomed the extra set of hands. He showed up just in time to help us stand up our second wall. Now you can see on this wall, we left the plywood sheathing overhanging each side by three and a half inches so that we could slide it on the outside of our other wall and it would perfectly fit together. So with Colin holding it together on the top, I worked my way down that King Cobra stud and I nailed our second wall to our first wall. 
then it was time to start on our third wall. This is actually going pretty quick and Colin had the bright idea of just handing us studs instead of hauling them all the way up the stairs. So while they cut down our vertical studs to length, I started marking out our third dinner plate with all the measurements for our Jack Reacher studs. Those are the two numbers there. And then for the full length studs, I just added a little X. I don't know why, it just seemed like something to do. I will say the really cool thing about framing versus building furniture is it happens really quick because you just mark everything out where it needs to be nailed together, plop everything in place, zip zap zoop, bing bang bong, and you've got yourself a wall. It's pretty simple. This wall is going to have two pretty large windows, so we added some more Jack Reacher studs, another Lucille ball plate, and one more header honcho. This is a big, beefy boy. Because these two windows are going to basically be right next to each other, I just decided to frame out one giant window, and then I'll just divide it after we get the wall stood up. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but that's kind of the theme of this and higher process so we're just putting stuff together and making stuff happen it's the american way in no time we had our third wall all framed up and sheathed and it was time to lift that one into place this one required a little more finesse because we were right up against the cables on the suspension bridge but with a little shimmy and a little shake we got that one worked into place now we had already squared off our second wall with our floor, so we measured the distance between those two walls, made sure it was the same as the distance on the back wall, and we tacked that one down. Then we framed up our fourth and final wall. This one we did just in between our other walls, and then we kind of worked it out to the front and got it locked in between our outer two walls. We decided not to sheathe this one until we got it up, because sheathing was going to be pretty easy because we could stand on that front deck. And if we sheathed it beforehand, well, Craig would have been trapped inside once we lifted the wall into place. I guess in hindsight, I kind of regret that we didn't sheathe the wall beforehand because it would have been nice to contain Craig for once. I always have a hard time finding him. If I just knew he was trapped in the treehouse, I'd always know where he was. Anyways, after getting our fourth wall up, then we decided to sheathe it. Well, halfway, because I still wanted to be able to get inside the door. At that point, I grabbed the reciprocating saw and started cutting out our windows. I thought about using a flush trim bit on the router to do this so it was nice and clean, but then I remembered, this is rough construction. It doesn't have to be pretty, yet. About that time, Ivor showed up to survey his new house and was pretty impressed with the framing capabilities of his old man. At least I can impress a seven-year-old when I pretend to know how to do things. That's a dad win right there. It was late in the day and the rest of my help had gone home and I was still alone in a treehouse cutting out windows. Now I don't want to toot my own horn or anything but toot toot for never framing anything in my entire life and I will fully admit this could be done completely wrong, but we had four walls up at the end of the day, and that's a win. Hey, this video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Now you might be saying, what the heck's Bespoke Post? Well, I'll tell you, that's the whole point of this thing. I explain the sponsor. All right, Bespoke Post is a monthly subscription service. And it's not like your normal monthly subscription service where you're locked in every month, you're paying an amount. The cool thing about Bespoke Post is they send out monthly boxes curated with 90% stuff that's made right here in America. And you only pay for what you want. So you get on their website, you take a quiz, they figure out what kind of things you like, they curate boxes, they send you an email, you have to preview the box before they even send it out. So if it's something you don't like, you can either A, skip the box, you can B, choose another box, or C, you can just skip the entire month and pay for nothing. So when you sign up, if they're gonna send you something you don't want and you don't want it, you just don't pay for it. They just sent me a couple boxes, let's check out what I got. 
So I got three awesome boxes to show you this time. They sent me the filet box with these super sharp kitchen knives. There's a big chef's knife and then a smaller paring knife. I'm definitely gonna be using these in the kitchen. They sent me the Tonto box. The thing I love about Bespoke Post is they're always sending me sweet knives. I'm a knife guy, I like knives, and it's fun to get them. And then they sent me the smoked box. Now, have you ever been to a fancy restaurant and you get those crazy smoked cocktails and you wonder, how in the world do they do that? Well, the cool thing about this box is you can make smoked cocktails right in the comfort of your own home with this little smoker setup. You just put the chips in there, light them on fire, stick your cocktail, and smoke away. If you want 20% off your first box, you just go to bespokepost.com slash woodworking20 or click the link in the video description and use the coupon code woodworking20. That's 20% off your first box. I'm telling you guys, Bespoke Post. You get some crazy cool stuff, makes a great gift. Go sign up. Now, the walls were the easy part. They were just a bunch of squares that you nailed together. The next day it was time to start on the tricky part and that was framing out the entire roof. Which, if I've never framed out walls before, I definitely have never framed out a roof before. And this requires a lot more angles and math and that sort of thing. Luckily, because I pre-designed the entire thing in SketchUp, I had all those angles and measurements. So all I really had to do was look at the computer and just cut all the pieces to match my drawing. Now I think most people would probably frame the peaks of the roof up on top of the wall just in place, but I'm not most people, and I've never done this before. So I had the idea of why don't we just frame all the peaks on the ground so we're not standing on ladders, and then once we have them built, we'll just lift them into place. So I made a little list of all the parts and pieces I needed at all the different angles. While I was cutting out the pieces, Colin marked out on the dinner plate for our peak where all those pieces needed to land. And then in theory, all we have to do is attach them to Colin's marks. Unfortunately, Colin's pretty indecisive with where he wants to put his marks. So they looked something like this. How the heck are you supposed to read that? There's so many lines and squiggles. I have no clue. So I just went with it. Started throwing down all my pre-cut pieces and tacking them in place. Hoping that at the end of this, we have something that resembles a right triangle because that's what our roof is supposed to look like. Now, after doing some research, I realized that the roof we're attempting to do is what they would call a 12-12. That refers to the pitch of the roof, meaning the height of the peak of the roof off of the dessert plate is half the width of the actual building, basically creating a right triangle of a roof on top of your building. That's a pretty steep roof, but I thought it would look cooler than a not steep roof. The good news is all of our angles worked out to be 45 degrees, so it made cutting everything pretty easy. So we just started laying everything out on the floor. We had all of our pieces cut to the right angle. They looked about like they should and that was good enough for me. So I grabbed the nail gun and started nailing everything where I thought it should go. Now obviously we're gonna need two of these because you need two peaks, one on either side of the building to create your roof. And this is the simpler of the two peaks. It's for the back wall, and it's just a full wall. The front peak is a little more tricky because that one's also gonna have a window in it. Because when I design things on the computer, I don't stop to think about how difficult it's actually gonna be to make those things in real life. So I end up in situations like this, where I have to frame the peak of a building, which is something I've never done before, and also frame a window into it, which is also something I've never done before. But I figured it has to be the same as just framing a window in a normal wall. And I've already done that three times at this point, so I cut some more Jack Reacher studs, added a Lucille ball plate, and doubled up some 2x6s for another header honcho. Now before we got everything nailed together for our second peak, I wanted to line it up with our first peak because the most important thing here is that the angle and slope of both peaks is identical, or else our roof is gonna be all cattywampus. So after testing it against our first peak and realizing that it matched up 
pretty darn good for three guys that don't know what they're doing. We nailed everything together on our second peak, and we were pretty much ready to lift this thing into place. Hopefully, they're not too heavy. Fortunately for us, Colin is extremely strong from working in a coffee shop. Apparently, you have to lift a lot of Vente cappuccinos and such, and it really builds up the forearms. So he pretty much lifted the entire peak up onto the scaffolding by himself. Then me and Craig climbed up there, and between the three of us, we were able to wiggle the whole thing onto our dessert plate on that back wall. Once we had the peak in place, we just centered it in between our wall, and I just nailed the crud out of it until it was secured to our bottom wall. Then we wheeled ourselves over to the other side, and, well, we did the same thing over there. Lifted that peak up onto our dessert plate, made sure it was nice and centered in between our wall, and tacked it down. Now, I did have to get a little creative through the scaffolding like a gymnast in order to reach every spot, but I got it tacked down in the end, and we were ready to start doing the actual roof part. Now, there's this large center piece of wood that connects the two peaks. I have no clue what this is actually called, but I'm going to call it a beam of sorts. That sounds good. The beam in the center, the center beam. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's called the center beam. No, probably not. Anyways, the center beam is made of a 2x12. Now it's going to be a full 2x12 on the inside of the building, but I cut these little tab things that are going to stick out the front that our fascia is going to attach to, and we're going to build our soffit off of that. Now I know the fascia and the soffit, those terms are correct because I looked them up on Google. As for this piece of wood, I'm going with center beam. That's probably wrong, but who cares? We're just inventing our own vocabulary at this point. Now the center beam perfectly sat on top of our little peaks. We actually made little notches in the framing for that to sit in place. And then I just hangnailed them into place um, with the nail gun. Next, it was time to install all of our rafters. Pretty confident in that term. I think that's what these are called. So we cut a 45 on the end of one two by eight piece of wood. We held it up to that center beam and then Craig used a pencil to trace out the shape of our outer wall because the rafter was gonna have to have a little notch cut in it to sit on top of our dessert plate on that outer wall. That gave us a piece of wood that looked like this. See how it's got a 45 at the top that ties into that center beam and it's got that little notch at the bottom that sits perfectly on our outer wall and creates these little tabs that hang off that will give us our overhang on our roof and our soffit and fascia will attach to said tabs. So once we got the shape of one rafter down, we just use that as a template to trace out the shape for all of our other rafters. There's gonna be 14 in total. So Colin and Craig traced them out, brought them to me, and then I just cut them with the skill saw. Sure, they would be a little off here or there, but for the most part, they'd all be identical. And that was good enough for me. Pretty soon, we had all 14 rafters cut, and now all we really had to do was nail them in place. So we just started with our outer rafter. This one lined up perfectly with our outer wall. I hang nailed them into that center beam on the top and then we spaced these ones out 24 on center because that's what the guys framing the roof for the addition on my house were doing. So we just copied them. And this process only took about a half an hour to get all 14 rafters nailed in place and with that our little treehouse was for the most part completely framed. Now obviously we still have the soffit to do and the fascia for our overhang and all that jazz. But that'll be in another video. I felt pretty happy with how this thing came together, considering I had never framed anything up to this point. Can't use that excuse anymore. 
Now we still have quite a ways to go. Windows, doors, roofing, siding, all that fun stuff. But we are one step closer to getting this thing complete. And it was starting to really take shape. Hey, we did it. Framed a treeless treehouse. Now, I will be the first to admit, I know nothing about framing, but why should that stop us? I mean, if you don't know how to do something, just go get some wood and just do it. Who cares if you're doing it right? We got it done. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You probably didn't learn anything, but maybe you were entertained. Be sure to check the video description down there below for links to products, and different tools there's a link to our website where you can get new merchandise there's a link to our patreon where you can get a bunch of behind the scenes footage we do a weekly youtube live question and answer all sorts of good stuff so be sure to check that out gotta figure out what comes next plumbing electrical hot tub sauna gotta put in the large screen tv there's the miniature roller coaster i gotta do gotta